Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So the symbols on these cards, when we flip them over, like the cherry, the orange, whatever you have on your cards, I've been calling these suits. Um, just like when we have playing cards, the hearts, the clubs, those are usually referred to as suits of cards. Um, and we are going to add in some more variations today. And we're going to build into our game the ability to turn up and down the number of suits in our game. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our card sprite. We're going to go to the top left corner and click on costumes. And we're going to right click on our blank card and duplicate. So I'm going to keep going with my food theme, but you can have whatever you want on these cards. Maybe your favorite um, Minecraft blocks, maybe um, your favorite Undertale characters, whatever you like you can put on these cards. I'm going to get some more um, sprites from the Scratch um, database. I'm going to click on the bottom left corner and click choose a costume. And the other thing I should say is that you can change what these suits are at any time. The way that we've built this game, you can for now just put in a bunch of placeholder types of cards and later on spend some time getting the graphics you really want or even making your own graphics. So there's a few that I'd like to add in. I'm going to add in some more fruit. I'm going to go for this strawberry. Now the easiest way to transfer this sprite here to the blank card here is to select this whole sprite click on group so that you can't pull the individual parts apart. It's just a lot easier to move around and change the size of it. Um, and then I'm just going to press Control X. You can also press cut. And then I'm going to go to the blank card and press Control V. You can also select paste. And I quite like the size of that. I think that's perfect. So I'm going to duplicate another blank card. I'm going to get rid of that empty strawberry sprite. And I'm going to get something else. Uh, let's go with cake. And this little gray dish, I'm going to delete that first. Select all of this. And I'm going to press group. If we didn't press group, then when I try to change things individually, you can accidentally pull apart all the different parts of the cake. So I'm just going to make sure this is grouped. And then I'm going to control X and control V. And now because it's grouped, I can very easily make it a little bit smaller if I wanted. And maybe just a little bit smaller again. That seems good. All right, let's see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some variations on the egg, I think. Let's have a look at egg. I'm going to get this one. And I'm also going to get this one. And I'm also going to get this one. So we've got these three different types of egg. Um, up till now, we've had very different looking cards. You can make your game harder if you make the cards look very similar, like these different variations of the egg. So this cracked egg, I'm just going to get rid of the little cartoony hands and legs. And so now we've got these three eggs that look kind of similar, especially the uh, uh, the egg with the crack in it and the, and the um, unbroken egg. Um, so let's duplicate. Let's move some of these down and let's duplicate this one. Let's get rid of that. All right, let's group and cut and paste. Ah, now you see the egg's a bit too small. So what I'm going to do is, whoop, I might need to compare some of these egg sizes. There are other ways to do this. They don't need to be perfect anyway.
Oh, it's pretty good. Maybe just a little bit bigger. Not much. Uh oh. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Seems pretty good. I'm going to get rid of some of these empty costumes and I'm going to make sure that all of these costumes are named correctly. I'm going to rename this to Strawberry. Rename this to Cake. And then I'm going to rename this to Egg1. Egg two and egg three. Now the way that our code works is it uses the names of the costumes to compare um, to make sure that it's received a match. So it doesn't matter too much what you name them. You could call this, you know, unbroken egg, uh, broken egg, cracked egg, something like that if you wanted. All right, so now we've got all our additional costumes here. What we're going to do is we're going to make a variable that keeps track of how many of the suits are in play. So we're going to go to the dark orange category variables. In the top left corner, we're going to click on make a variable and we're going to rename, we're going to, we're going to name this variable number of suits. You can call it something else if you want. Just remember what your variable is and understand that I'm going to call it number of suits. So now I'm going to get out a set variable. I'm going to put it right underneath our when green flag clicked. I'm going to change it to set number of suits. And originally we had one, two, three, four, didn't we? Yeah, we had the apple, the bananas, the orange, the watermelon. So to start off with, let's just go, let's just set number of suits to four. So now we're gonna have to look at our code and mainly we're gonna have to look at where it, where we have define create list and look for set card suit to pick random two to five. This is where we create um, what the cards are in the list. Um, and at the time, we had the first costume was the blank costume, and then two, three, four, five were the four different suits that we had. So we just said pick random two to five. So because we have the blank costume, we have to add one. But aside from that, we just want this to be pick random two to number of suits plus one because we've got to remember to account for the blank card which is not itself a card suit if that makes sense um so now we're going to go to the green category operators we're going to pull out a plus operator an addition multiplier um, operator and we're going to put that in the five of our pick random two to five um, and then we're going to go to variables and we're going to pull out number of suits and put that in the first socket of our addition operator and then we're going to put a one in the second one. So now we've got pick random two to number of suits plus one, which makes sense, doesn't it? If we have four suits, apple, bananas, orange and watermelon, that's two to five. That's and five is one more than the number of suits. Um, in our variable number of suits. Okay, that all works. Um, so now what we can do is we can change this set number of suits to nine. When green flag clicked, set number of suits to nine. I have nine different suits. Um, we've got the, the blank one and then the nine others. You might have a different number of available suits. You might have got a lot more or you might have a lot less. So you can set this number to whatever one you like, but let's just give this a test and see if we can find some new suits. There we go. We've got ourselves a cake and there's a strawberry and there's another cake. So in theory, this makes the game a little bit harder because there's a higher variation of matching cards. It should be harder to match cards. Now, of course, because it's random, 
there's going to be times when you don't get a lot of some of the new suits. Now, there would be ways of coding in um, sort of the a way of guaranteeing a lot more variation between all of the suits. Um, but that might be a little bit complicated. There we go. We've got some, we've got our egg there. Um, so yeah, by all means, uh, if you've got a good idea for a way of coding in a bit more variation to guarantee there's a lot of, um, there's a lot more that, that we've got a, a, a very high variety of suits, then let me know in the comments. There is ways that I can think of doing it, but probably a little bit too complicated, a little unnecessary. Now there's only one more thing we need to do, and that is when we have our falling cards animation, when we win the game, and we should still have our cheat code of pressing A. You can see it's only got the old suits there. It doesn't have any of the new suits in. So what we need to do is we've got our falling card sprite that doesn't have the blank uh, card, but it has all the others. So we need to just go to our card sprite and then drag into falling cards all of the new um, costumes that we've made. Just make sure that you go to the, the card sprite, you go to costumes, then you click, drag and drop it on the sprite in the bottom right corner like you just saw me do. And you can see now we've transferred all the costumes across. So if you have a costume you really like, that's a really easy way of transferring it from one sprite to another. And then what you need to do is look in Falling Cards, the code. Falling Cards Animation, I believe, is the full name of the sprite. And look for When I Start as Clone. It'll have Switch Costume 2, Pick Random 1 to 4. We just need to cover over that 4 with our variable from, our, um, from, our, uh, from the uh, dark orange category, um, Number of Suits, so that it says Switch Costume 2, Pick Random 1 to Number of Suits. So that all seems pretty good. And now if we give this a test, I've still got number of suits set at nine. Let's hit A. And there we go. We've got a bunch of our new suits coming through, don't we? Now even, and as I said before, randomness is um, not always high variance. You might have just seen there were like four watermelons that all went past at the same time. And that's the nature of randomness. Sometimes when you're generating really random numbers, you get a bunch of the same thing. Um, so this is kind of an interesting lesson about random number generators. Sometimes what you get doesn't seem very random, even though it is very random. But over the course of many games, you will have a lot of variance. Okay, so there's only one more thing I think that would be kind of cool to do, and I think it's time to put something over the black background of our game. Um, sorry, the white background of our game. And I'm thinking it'd be cool to have a kind of really black kind of um, gradiated um, effect. Uh, I think it'll set off the sort of the, the hearts. They'll look really good. So to explain, let's go to the backdrops. In the, on the right side of the screen, and then click in the top left corner, you'll notice Costumes is now called Backdrops. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get a rectangle, and what I'm going to do is set this to black, and I'm gonna choose this particular shade ability, where it's sort of shaded horizontally, and let's do it like this. This. And I quite like how that looks, although I might just darken this color a little bit more. Yeah, that looks quite nice. got the nice red standing out from the black so that's pretty cool now you of course can choose any color you like green blue whatever your favorite color is and um, you could even put some kind of uh, pattern or graphic over the backdrop that you slowly get to um, reveal as you get rid of all the cards that could be kind of cool um, so 
what we'll probably do next session is we'll figure out a way of changing the number of suits that the player can access because right now we decide how many suits are in the game um, but it would be really interesting to be able to create um, multiple types of difficulty so stay tuned for that for next week um, as always subscribe to see the next episode if there's something you'd like me to add to the game or a suggestion for a tutorial in the future that you'd like me to do then leave a comment um, aside from that stay awesome be cool to each other and take care of yourselves we'll see you next time ninjas <laughs>